Picture this. You pour yourself a glass of milk. It's white, smooth, and simple. Now think about the cheese in your fridge. Bright yellow, golden, and full of character. It's hard to believe they come from the same source, right? Somewhere along the way, that plain white liquid transforms into something colorful and rich. And it's not just some kitchen magic at work. From the fields where cows graze to the clever hands of cheesemakers, there's a fascinating story behind that golden hue. So why is cheese yellow and milk is white? Let's uncover the science, history, and a little bit of human trickery behind it, right here on History of Simple Things. Before we talk about why cheese isn't white, we first need to understand why milk is. Milk looks white because it's a blend of water, fat, and proteins, specifically casein proteins. These tiny molecules scatter light in every direction, which makes milk appear white to our eyes. It's kind of like how clouds are white because the water droplets inside them scatter sunlight. Now, milk isn't purely white. It actually has a very faint yellowish tint, if you look closely. That's thanks to something called beta-carotene, a natural pigment found in grass and plants that cows eat. You might recognize beta-carotene as the same compound that gives carrots their orange color. When cows munch on grass, that pigment passes into their milk fat. But because milk is mostly water, that pigment is heavily diluted. So while there's a bit of yellow in it, the light scattering from the proteins overpowers it, leaving milk looking white. When milk turns into cheese, the story changes drastically. During cheesemaking, most of the water and whey, that's the liquid left behind, are removed. And what's left is the solid part, mainly fat and protein. Now here's the fun part. As water leaves, the pigments that were once faint in milk get concentrated. That means beta-carotene suddenly becomes much more visible. The result? The cheese starts taking on that pale yellow to deep orange shade, depending on how much pigment was there to begin with. Think of it like making orange juice concentrate. If you evaporate the water, the color and flavor intensify. Cheese works the same way. Less water, more visible color. But not all cheeses are yellow naturally. Some remain pale or even white, depending on the milk used. So what makes the difference? The secret starts in the pasture. Cows that graze on grass produce milk rich in beta-carotene because fresh grass is packed with that pigment. Cows fed mostly on grains or hay, on the other hand, have less beta-carotene in their diet so their milk is lighter, and so is the cheese made from it. That's why traditional cheeses made in the countryside, like cheddar from the English countryside, often had a natural golden hue. The cows there grazed on lush green fields, giving their milk that buttery tint. Meanwhile, cheeses made in places where cows were fed mostly on stored feed, like during winter months, came out paler. So, back in the day, you could actually tell when and where a cheese was made just by looking at its color. But here's where things get interesting. Cheese color eventually became a marketing tool. In the 17th and 18th centuries, English cheesemakers noticed something. They could get more money for cheese that looked rich and yellow. People thought a deep golden color meant better quality and higher fat content. See, the fat in milk carries the beta-carotene. So when farmers skimmed off some of the cream to sell separately, the remaining milk had less fat and looked paler. Consumers began associating white cheese with being weak or cheap. To keep up appearances, some clever cheesemakers started adding colorants. First natural ones like carrot juice, marigold petals, or saffron, to make their cheese look more appealing. Later on, a plant called annatto from the seeds of the Achiote tree became the go-to choice. 
Anato gave cheese a consistent, warm, golden color that didn't affect flavor. It became such a hit that even when cheesemakers no longer needed to fake the color, they kept doing it because that golden yellow hue had become what people expected good cheese to look like. So ironically, yellow cheese started as a bit of a cheat. A harmless, tasty one, but a cheat nonetheless. Fast forward to today, and that tradition still lives on. Many cheeses, especially cheddars and processed varieties, get their color from added annatto. If you've ever noticed that white cheddar and orange cheddar taste exactly the same, that's why. The difference is purely cosmetic. White cheddar is basically what cheese looks like without colorants, while orange cheddar gets its golden glow from annatto. Other cheeses, like mozzarella, Swiss, or brie, are left in their natural state, which is usually pale white or creamy. That's because they're made from milk that's low in beta-carotene, or because they're made with specific bacterial cultures that keep the color light. Interestingly, cheeses made from goat's milk or sheep's milk are almost always white. That's because goats and sheep convert beta-carotene into vitamin A in their bodies, leaving none of the pigment behind in their milk. So no matter what you feed them, the cheese stays white. It's a beautiful example of how nature and biology dictate something as simple and as delicious as color. Even though color doesn't affect taste, yellow cheese became a cultural favorite. When you picture a cheeseburger, mac and cheese, or nachos, you instantly see that golden orange glow. It just feels cheesy. It's partly psychological. Warm colors like yellow and orange signal richness and comfort, just like butter or egg yolks do. Food companies caught on fast. By the 20th century, they made yellow cheese the standard look of quality. Even processed cheese borrowed that color to mimic traditional cheddar. Now, yellow cheese is so iconic that white cheese on a burger looks almost incomplete. But remember, the color doesn't change the flavor. A white cheddar can taste just as sharp and delicious as its orange twin. So, let's recap. Milk is white because of light scattering proteins. Cheese becomes yellow because water is removed and pigments like beta carotene get concentrated. The shade deepens depending on the cow's diet, and sometimes, cheesemakers add a little color to keep things consistent or just to make it look more delicious. What started as a natural chemical reaction became a cultural symbol. The golden cheese we love today is part science, part history, and part marketing illusion. Next time you unwrap a slice of cheddar, just know that inside that little piece of yellow is a story that starts with a cow, a blade of grass, and a little bit of human creativity. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.